Hi everyone. Today I have an unexpected guest. He's a physics professor and also my grandpa. Hi guys. He always tells me the newest things about science and how quickly they change. So let's get started. Let's get started. I'm excited to be interviewed by my granddaughter. Let's go. How long have you been a physics professor? Oh, I've been a physics professor for a very long since the time maybe even you weren't born and when your father was a small child, so it's quite some time. If you could choose a different subject to teach, what would it be? Well, I would choose, of course, physics because I love it, but I would like also maybe to teach biology or archaeology because these are very exciting sciences, but to me, physics is the best. Why would you choose those? Well, because they are scientists Sciences that give us knowledge. So any science in general gives us knowledge, but let's say biology is the science about life around us, so it's very important. Archaeology is the science about our history. If we don't know our history, it's very difficult to understand what's going to happen to us in the future. So we need to have as much information as we can to get from our history, and maybe we can judge about future based on this knowledge. I know you used to teach astronomy. How does it relate to astrology? Okay, astrology appeared maybe even before astronomy and it was the time when people just started to observe the skies and they were using positions of different stars and zodiac signs which are constellations in order to predict how the weather is going to be changed when the seasons will start and based on that they were able to do their agricultural because all the communities long time ago they were agricultural now of course since we are developed scientifically developed society we have a separate science that is called astronomy that basically studies the universe and astrology is mainly kind of thing that people use in order to predict the future and my point of view is that astrology is not the science anymore it's just you know some kind of entertainment that people like to have because some people believe in it some people don't but we all believe in astronomy as a science last summer i visited the planetarium and learned a lot about black holes i know a lot of people wonder about them and they want to know how dangerous they are well, fortunately for us, we don't have any black holes close to, the, to our planet, so it's not dangerous. But it's extremely interesting object in the universe from the point of view of science, which is part of astronomy or science in general that is called astrophysics. And the existence of black holes was predicted in the beginning of 1900s. Basically, Einstein theory predicts their existence. But we still know not so much about their properties, so it's actively studied right now, even though it's kind of difficult because they are too far away. And modern science believes that black holes appeared almost the same time when the universe was created, so it's billions of years ago. Since you've been teaching science for a long time, how do you think it affects our ocean? Well, you know, First of all, importance of ocean for science is very hard even to explain because everything started from the ocean, the life started in the ocean. So physics, as a part of science, studies ocean from the point of view as properties of liquids. So it's very important to control, let's say, the temperature of the ocean, how the different phenomena that are happening in the ocean depend upon the change of the temperature, the change of the pressure and other influences. For example, there exists such kind of thing that is called tsunami. Tsunami as a rule is produced when uh, some very powerful earthquake happens deep in the ocean. So people have right now a special network of stations all over the globe that controls the appearance and power of earthquakes. And when it happens, they know that a particular point of the ocean was subjected to this earthquake, 
then this tsunami waves can appear and they can even predict based on the physics of tsunami how long it takes for this tsunami to get to the ocean so they can in some way predict the destroy you know destroyment of everything that can happen in the ocean because those tsunami they destroy everything that is on the shore how big can tsunamis usually get well you know it depends upon how powerful is earthquake over there so it's very hard to let's say say in advance but when the earthquake happens people know what will be the power of tsunami and depending on that they know how long it's gonna take for tsunami to get to the shore well it's a very special part of physics of ocean and there are special research labs and institutes that are working on that so it's a very interesting question basically but we can spend the whole day discussing it how do you think plastic pollution is going to change our world in 50 well, years plastic pollution in our world plastic destroys the ocean first of all and it is dangerous for the life in the ocean so science not only physics physics may be not able to help much but i would say chemistry can help in order to create some kind of special methods how one can utilize those plastics without production of a lot of carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is dangerous and unfortunately we are producing a lot of it as a civilization so that's why we have global warming and it affects the ocean and as a result we have those huge hurricanes that you have experienced right and we have other you know events in the ocean in the world ocean that would better not to have but nothing can be done about it unless we can lower the temperature of the ocean at least for a couple of degrees so young people like you supposed to study science no matter what kind of field of science you study in order to be able to save our planet in the future you know i read in an article that in 2050 there will be more plastic than fish what do you think about that? well i hope it's not going to happen so by that time people will find some ways of utilizing you know plastics and not to destroy the ocean and they will find the most important ways how to clean the ocean from the plastic that's already there so people should be aware about danger of plastic for the ocean and from that point of view you are doing a tremendous job in order to make people aware how dangerous plastic is thank you you're welcome i'm proud that you are doing it is there anything new in science that can help our oceans become healthier of course i mean as i said first of all we can find the way how to clean the ocean from plastic then if we study a lot of marine biology which is a very important subject we would know what should be done to the water how it should be cleaned in order to preserve the life in the ocean because the life of the ocean is very important we are fishing we are getting fish from the ocean and it's food and there are you know plants in the in the ocean that are also very useful for technology and for people to eat so that's why marine biology and marine chemistry is one of the most important subjects that people supposed to study to have the ocean cleaned have you ever studied marine biology not as a scientist i read a lot of popular books which i would recommend you guys young people to read in order to understand the amount of problems that you know mankind might face if they don't start cleaning the ocean thank you grandpa for coming to this oh, mini it's interview my pleasure. i'm so happy to do that guys if you have any questions for my grandpa please email them and i'll post them on my instagram the questions and answer Remember, education is the key to saving our oceans. Thank you, Grandpa. You are much welcome, my dear. And education is important, so I'm happy that you know that. Thank you.